All right, let's talk about fractured static meshes. Fractured static meshes allow you to add some more interactivity to your levels by taking something which generally doesn't move, like a static mesh, and giving you the ability to blow it to tiny bits while you play your game. Now, let's take a look at one of these. I've got a fractured static mesh set up here in this level. I'm just going to drop in. Now, all these exterior walls, these are just regular static meshes. I can shoot them, and nothing happens. It's pretty much what we expect from static meshes. However, this wall breaks apart. I can blow a hole through it. This is what fractured static meshes are all about. They're very easy to set up, but they do have a few properties you need to be aware of. The other thing is that when you want to create your own fractured static mesh, you need to use a static mesh that has a collision model, because that collision model is what actually is going to be used to calculate the fracture. So please, please keep that in mind as kind of our opening guideline. Now I'm going to jump out of this level, and let's set up a really basic fracture of our own, and then we'll come back and we'll talk in a little bit more depth about the properties that we're using. So for starters, let's just open up the content browser. I'm going to switch to all assets, clear out my search line. And what I want you to do is search for supports. So S-U-P-P-O-R-T-S. -P -P and then let's narrow this down to just static meshes. And we see S-H-U supports S-M cement block 01, which if we double click it to open it up in the static mesh editor, it's already a nice big block of cement, which looks like it's ready to be shattered. I mean, it's just crying out for us to just bust it into tiny bits. So what we're going to do is with this guy opened up here inside the static mesh editor, we're going to click on the fracture tool button. It's located right next to the save thumbnail angle, which is a little eyeball. It's a little faint yellow wireframe. Another option, you can go under the tool menu of the static mesh editor and choose fracture tool. Now this will open up the Fracture Tool window, which has a few sliders, a few entry fields, and some check boxes and whatnot. We're going to leave most of this alone. We're not really going to dwell on that right now. But I am going to kind of position our static mesh editor so we can see the Fracture Tool at the same time. Let's just set some very general properties to get a basic fracture going on. And then in a future video, we'll go into some more depth on what you see here. So I'm going to start off with my Generate Trunks group. We're going to take the Num Chunk slider and slide it up to something like 50 chunks. As soon as we do that, I'm going to click Generate and check it out. Over here in the Static Mesh Editor, we can actually see a representation of these chunks. Now, if you want to see them a little more easily, you can scroll down here to Show Cuts Solid and check that, and now you can get a clearer idea of exactly how many cuts there are. Now, without going too far into what you're doing, you can click on any one of these chunks and you'll get some feedback these numbers you see are representative of how, f how much of a connection that chunk has to all of its neighboring pieces. So a greater number means it's actually touching more of the surface of a neighboring piece. What I'm going to do, though, is come back over here to the Fracture Tool window, and down in the Chunk Selection group, you see Select Bottom. I'm going to click on that, and that's a good enough selection for my purposes. Actually, let me make sure that nothing is selected first. Then I'm going to click Select Bottom, because I don't want that chunk up there to be selected. Now, with just the bottom selected, I'm going to switch off destroyable. That means that the chunks down here on the bottom will not be able to be broken away, but I will switch on support chunk. That means these chunks will kind of help hold the overall integrity of our fractured mesh together. Now, currently, we need to slice this. We need to kind of finalize our chunks. You'll notice that over here inside the static mesh editor, you see 50 chunks, but need slicing. So let's go ahead and click slice. We'll get a little bit of a calculation. And then it's going to ask for some package info. Let's store this in fracture mesh demo as a package. Group, we'll just call the group um, meshes. And then I don't really want to use this really big long name. I mean, we could, but we're going to call this fractured underscore column. And click OK. It generates everything that it needs to. 
And there we go. We're done. We can now close out of the fracture tool, though before we do, take a look at our mesh. Notice it went back to 50 chunks, but the tool said, oh, I'm sorry, it, the mesh went down to 49 chunks, though the tool says 50 chunks. The reason for that is that one of those chunks was entirely inside the mesh and no part of its surface actually touched the outside that the player sees. Any chunk that is completely contained like that will get culled away and it won't calculate. So let's go ahead and close the fracture tool. I'm going to close the static mesh editor as well. And we need to find this package. Now, if you scroll over here in your source area and you don't see the package you just created, a quick way to show it up is to come to the top of your content browser. There's this little tiny drop down arrow, and you can choose full refresh. Alternatively, you can hit control F5. And now we can see the fracture static meshes package. Let's go ahead and hit control S and save that. So, control S. Oh, can't save map files, not saving it just yet. Okay, we won't worry about that yet. Let me go ahead and clear out uh, the filter area. Make sure we're inside of Fracture, I'm sorry, Fracture Mesh Demo. There we go. And we'll hit Control S, click Save. Now, there's our fractured column mesh, our packages saved. All we need to do is get this placed in our level. So I'm just going to drag and drop right out of the content browser, like so. Now, it's crucial that we build lighting. And something that is going to kind of pop up a little later, though I will go ahead and start reminding you of it now. Every change that we make to the settings of a fractured static mesh will require that lighting gets rebuilt. So keep that in mind and make sure you're done editing your fractured static mesh before you build lighting. But I'm going to slide our lighting kind of off here to the side. We'll take just a moment and build it, which shouldn't take long with such a simple level. And here it goes, and light mass is doing its thing. Go, light mass, go! And as soon as this is done, we'll jump into the level and just see how this is working. So that's all finished. We can close out our error windows. Let's right click and choose play from here. And here's our great big column like a monolith. And if we shoot it, pieces are breaking off, which is excellent. Now currently, you'll notice we have the null material on the inner surfaces. That's something we can clean up in the properties of the fractured static mesh. So that's not really all that important to us. But we have set up a basic fracture, and that's going to wrap things up for this video. As we move forward, we'll talk more about these settings and how we can exert a little more control over our fracture mesh. For now, go ahead and save your level, and then we'll move forward. Thanks.